appears to be totally isolated. So what's happening, Bev? Um, exhaust elbow time. It is, isn't it? I'm concerned just because of the noise the engine made. Any chance of showing your face? I'm concerned because of the noise the engine was making yesterday when we were using it. And also we've had a, a bit of oil up here somewhere. And what I'm concerned about is if there's a blockage in it, the crankcase pressure is building up and pushing oil out through a weak gasket. So we're going to take it apart and have a look. Then we'll know the answer. What minor victory have you had after I'm 20 minutes? Managed to get one nut off. I'm, I'm very conscious of not breaking. Just but something just dropped, didn't it? Yes. I'm very conscious of not breaking the studs off because that would be an absolute disaster. But I've got that one there off. Excellent news. I'll let you get on with it. So how's it going, Bev? Um, two fish and chips, portion of peas. Uh, what? No! Getting the exhaust elbow off. Oh, uh, getting it off has been a bit of fun. The, nut, the nuts on it are on so tight that I've had to use a another trick I was taught many years ago by a mechanic, an aviation mechanic I used to know. And basically, the problem is that the spanner, I can get the spanner on, on the, on the nut, but I don't Just have go the, forward a little bit, just so I can... Okay, I can get the spanner on, I can get it on the nut, which is in here somewhere. I cannot get enough leverage to actually undo it. So a trick, a trick that the mechanic taught me was to take another spanner and loop it over the first spanner like that and you've now doubled the length of this spanner and it doubled your leverage. So because I know Gaynor and what she's like, she's like, I can't say that. So there's that on, on your nut and you can't get enough leverage. So what you do is you take another spanner, you put it inside the jaw of that one and all of a sudden you've got twice the leverage and for tightening them up of course you just do the, the, the exact opposite you put them on the other side and you can tighten up now the danger of this is don't use too big a spanner this will massively multiply your leverage and if you get it big enough you, you can snap things off you can put so much force on that um, you can break studs you can um, tick, tick the tops off bolts um, so you want to get this leverage and use it sensibly. So what I've done is, when I've had it on like that, I have put easing oil on the studs and the nuts, and I've got that, and then I've just kept pressure on it. As I haven't been pulling it, I've just put a lot of pressure on and just sat and waited. And after about 10 or 20 seconds, you feel a little bit of movement. So you just keep the pressure on and you get a little bit of movement and a little bit of movement, and it gets quicker and quicker and quicker. And that's it, the seal has been broken and it starts to move. So once you've got that, you can take them off safely. The danger with these is these exhaust studs in the back of engines, uh, they get brittled over time. And if you break one of them, it's a major job to get it fixed. And I don't want to do that. Um, there was another tip you were giving, uh, you were telling me about uh, with uh, breaking the seal of the hose. Oh, that. Um, I was also told by somebody to take a, a long, thin screwdriver and undo all the clamps. Uh, get a long thin screwdriver, put it down uh, between the the hose tail and the hose and put a bit of fairy liquid in and just move it around gradually and gently uh, lifting the rubber so that where it's stuck to the metal you're just lifting it off and breaking the seal. Once you've broken the seal most of the way around and the fairy liquid, the, the dish soap, will work its way in there and act as a lubricant and you can then just twist it off and it works very good. And for putting it back on, absolutely smear both ends of it in dish soap it just slips on beautifully. Well, the exhaust elbow is off. Um, this little trip to Malahide, we've actually, even though we haven't run the engine much, we've run the engine a lot harder than we would normally. Like uh, going into um, Strangford Lock, we were trying to compensate for the tide, so we put the engine on really, really hard. And coming into Malahide, uh, we realised that we were coming into Malahide at literally high water. And I just said to Beverly, we've got to get there because um, if you leave it any more than an hour, you're not getting in. So we had to ram the in, um, work the engine hard. So Beverly was concerned that Salty Lass was sounding very throaty. Um, so we've inspected it and uh, we're glad to say that yes, 
there were sup deposits uh, but it's a lot better than we thought and what we thought was um, hard soot is actually metal it's just that the gasket doesn't go all the way to the edge for whatever reason the gasket's bigger than the hole basically the hole in the gasket is bigger and that's why um what we thought we thought it was actually bunged up is actually metal um i was also concerned about this section because i couldn't sort of like go through but what it is is it it, it comes through here and it goes through this outer sleeve and then it actually comes in here so i've learned that so that's all good but now we've got to put it all back again and then tomorrow i think i will clean the engine compartment because i just like things to be clean i used to be such a messy pup which is why on my side it is absolutely messy but uh, when it comes to my engine I like my engine to look clean there. another item on the list the never-ending list the eternally ever-growing list yeah you'd have done well in Cantor's infinite hotel do you know that I would uh, the worst of it is is um, as soon as I cross an item off the list I put a new item on the list um, like for instance um, when we were doing the exhaust elbow um, Beverly was using 4060 Jubilee clips and we just don't have one of those in our spares so I've put that on the list I also found an issue with the coolant hose so that's now on the list so I crossed off two items and I put on two items. You truly are living in Cantor's <laughs> infinite hotel with an infinite number of rooms and all the guests have to shift you along one room. Yeah. yeah, I am the list person. and I have just been anchored outside Alf Harbour uh, for one night and we also anchored off Island's Alley for one night. Um, we changed positions from Island's Eye purely because of swell. Um, the tide was such that it was just sort of like starting to throw us around a bit. So we moved over to Alf Harbour and probably a little bit too close to the entrance <laughs> I could easily be a little bit further away but we're off and uh, hopefully we'll get somewhere but at the moment Beverly and I haven't got a clue apart from we want to go south Dublin Bay and we're coming up to Docky Sound. I've been here before uh, a year ago and we were motoring then and we're motoring now. 
We are. Unfortunately, the wind is very, very light and it's dead ahead of us, so we can't use it for sailing. And this particular sound is quite deep. Uh, there's a lot of rocks and shoals in it. You've got to go in quite close to the uh, land and just run through. So that's what we're going to do. And then out the other side, and then it's a couple of hours down the coast to our stop for the night, which will be Greystones. Well, the only uh, thing of interest is um, that we've done is um, crossing the um, traffic separation zone and getting quite close to a few of the boys. Um, <laughs> and a couple of the cruise ships. The cruise ships, um, yeah, and um, we've seen a variety of um, cardinals, um, fairway boys, and of course racing marks. Oh, the place is covered in racing marks. It's also covered in fishing pots. And there's one there, one there, one there, and one there. And, you yeah, know, so. so we've better, and there's one over there, so. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm not counting the ones to see her because they don't matter. Yeah, so uh, I'm, that's what I'm on duty for, and Beverly's on helm. small boats because there's no way a big boat could be on those. Okay, so the outside of the is a hammerhead. Yeah, but I've got to leave myself enough room to get round. I understand. Right, this is tight. Three metres under the queue. Get out of it. Okay, neutral. Could be 14 there, you see. Oh, 
right. So 14's at the bottom. I see it, right. We must be down at the bottom then. Do they go up in twos or do they go up in ones? Beside this mallow. Right. Just make sure I'm clear at the front. Not really. Just snag that line, don't worry about it. We on? Hammer in. That went nicely, didn't it? Interesting. <laughs> uh, somehow or other, again, I managed to do a silty last first. Managed to lasso one of the uh, fenders with her um, with her mirroring line, get it twisted round it about three times. We don't know how she did it. She doesn't know how she did it. Anyway, no harm done. Um, somebody was on hand just to just throw it onto a cleat for us, and then we got it all sorted out. But it was fun. Very, very tight coming in. Um, I barely, barely managed to make this turn, and I've already got people phoning me up, so I better go see what's happening. Uh, Banga Marina just telling us that a an Amazon delivery's turned up. Yeah, an Amazon delivery's turned up one with that um, one that we didn't order. With um, what was it? A three eighths? Some sort of a, an extension set for sockets. I yeah, it's so a three eighths extension set for sockets. So whoever is the uh, kind Don't donator, because it's certainly I didn't buy it. Look at this. I'm actually starting to sweat in my mullions. Oh my goodness. So anyway, thank you very, very much. You ever donated it? Thank uh, you. Uh, oh. The marina is holding on to it for us. We'll get it when we get back in October. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll see it then. 